Hello and welcome to my channel on human design. So today I want to look into the mechanics of conditioning and especially in the early life. There are situations that appear in families that we can do absolutely nothing about. One of these is the transauric aura. In other words, there are groupings that happen, especially in the family unit. So let's say you've got five people in the family and it's a dysfunctional penta, which most of them are. So let's say there's a hierarchical tension within the five people in the family, which means there's always going to be levels of hierarchy and it isn't going to feel good. So what happens if you're at the lowest end of the hierarchy? What happens if you're a projector surrounded by generators and manifesting generators? Whatever you try to do to be seen will be not enough compared to the generators because they are designed to do and to do and to do. And any kind of competition on the doing field isn't going to work. And um, what if they have motors to the throat and you're a projector and you can't? you're not going to be able to make yourself heard. You know, they'll always be talking over you. And we grow up with this. We grow up with this sense of, look, I'm not good enough. This is amplified by the open will and the not self tendency to want to try to prove ourselves. So you can get a projector as a young person feeling very bitter but I don't want to dwell on that. I want to dwell on what we can do about it. So we've got all these patterns that come in, all these energetic mechanics that there's nothing we can do about. And it's going to feel uncomfortable. So, you know, a lot of the times we kind of run away. You know, we run away from the family. We go, okay, that's it. I've had enough. I can never win in that scenario within those mechanics, which is true if you take the normal look at things. But what if we don't? I mean, how do you break through the conditioning? Well, if you've been bullied, you know, you're always going to carry that uh, that sense of resentment and hurt and fear. And there's a lot of things out there that are going to be emphasizing the fear that from all kinds of uh, situations, both as a, an employee, the fear of the employer sacking you, uh, whatever it may be. But survival isn't enough to thrive. And this is where the point comes in. I mean, let's take another example. Let's take an example of, let's say you're a highly individual chemistry and you never quite fit in with the family dynamics because you're simply not designed that way. And as a result of that, you get punished, you get excluded, you get that look from the parents that you never forget and you see it again in another person completely unrelated and the fear kicks off again the conditioning kicks off again so it's not enough to run away from it it's not enough to survive it's really about cutting through the conditioning now happily we do have human design happily we have been initiated into a system where we can see what our design is and we can also see the design of our family members or our employer and employees whatever it may be we have the opportunity to understand but understanding isn't enough a bully may always be a bully they may always be strong you're not going to beat them in a physical fight that's not going to change you have to change and human design gives you the opportunity to be twice born to cut from the past when you didn't know what you were doing and you didn't know who you were and you're surrounded by other people that don't know who they are and they don't know what they're doing either but as you experiment through your strategy and authority you get to see more and more validation for who you are the projector who discovers that, you know, they really are a guide and that it, given the right time when the invitation is there, then people listen to them and good things happen. They get that praise, they get that recognition and they get those the, the thanks for helping. 
And so they build a level of self-esteem from being correct. You know, little by little by little. It's the small things that build and build until the big things come along and, you know, you find it works then as well. So what can you do about the early conditioning? What can you do about the penta mechanic that will not change? Well, you need to have your eyes wide open. You need to have your eyes wide open so that when you go into the family unit and the same mechanics take place. This is the both the horrible thing and the beautiful thing about the not self. It is dense. It is predictable. It is the same old, same old. So when one of your siblings comes up and says the same things they always do to try to put you down, you know, you just look at them. You just look at them without the fear, knowing now more who you are and who they are that they don't know who they are. It's not that you have to say anything. It's your attitude when you meet that because you know it's going to come. It always comes. It's the same thing all the time, every time you come to the family, the same things happen. So this time, from within you, you cut the ties, you see it as if it was a play, like a drama, you know, the you know, the script, you know, the narrative, and it plays out as you expect, because it will. But you're not playing the same role. You're not playing the role that you were back then as a child, you're you now, you're standing up to it, you're seeing it, it is your eyes seeing it that gets it to drop. You can't do anything about the others. If they're not open to the information, let it go. It's not your position uh, if you're low in the penta to try to convince anyone of anything. Let it go. It's for you to see that you are different, that you hold yourself in a different sort of high regard because you know who you are, because you found these glimmers of success, you found yourself achieving in this way and that way, you've had positive affirmation from others outside the unit in the way that you've led your life. And this happens more and more. It reinforces the positive side of you being you. So you don't have to go back and be taken over by the penta. You just have to see it. And you can always walk away and come back into it. It's like an opportunity, an experiment to see that these, these ropes no longer hold you. The look of your parents that you used to get so many times, you look them straight back and you hold your, your look. You're not going to be intimidated anymore. It's not the way it works. You're younger. You've had more experience. You've grown up. It's not the same thing. And you don't have to be, you don't have to have this getting back at them either kind of thing, because that also reinforces it. The number of people that hold on to the resentment that they received when they were children and are kind of looking for a way to get back, looking for a way to prove themselves in a way they never could then. It's not about that. It's about seeing the way it is, seeing that it's not changing, but you are different. You are different because it's not a, just a matter of understanding. You've put it into practice in a real life situation, one that you might be really nervous of going into, but at the same time, you are different. The understanding of who you are is truthful. It is the case. You just operate from that. I mean, in the situation of being a projector among generators, as a projector, you can move in a completely different way. You know, you can penetrate in the aura in different ways. You can, you can see clearer than they can many, many, many things. It doesn't have to be a power struggle. It just has to be the clear sight of someone who's opened their eyes and can see the way things are really happening. And you no longer are part of that because of what's happened inside of you. This is why it's important to see that this information isn't just facts and figures and numbers. It is a matter of really being initiated into perceiving the Maya more as it actually is, rather than as it felt back in the day when you couldn't really understand what was going on. This is the power of human design. 
it's not a power to be used over people because you know more than they do about the way things work it's not to be used that way it's for your own empowerment it's for you to come to yourself and if they are open to use it in a positive way to show them some of the things that are true for them only if there's an opening otherwise not remember human design is a young knowledge in the world um, there's a lot of people that will want to quote uh, astrology to you or uh, some uh, different spiritual teachings or whatever you're not there to compete what's on your side is the truth and the clear sight to be able to see it but the speaking of it will depend upon the moment and will depend upon what's happening with you there is nothing to prove it is about letting those ties fall away you yourself cut the puppet strings and you find yourself not behaving in the way you used to you find yourself standing up in your own light and in that way, things can change, but it's not for you to force them. It's for you to be you. That is the wonder of human design. That is the beauty of human design. To be free among the slaves, to be able to see it the way it is. And in that sense, to even grow the compassion for those people that used to crush you when you were younger and used to dominate you when you were younger, and to see them and that behavior in other people that you meet along the way. But this time to see, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They really don't know what they're doing. And they're, they're far more trapped than you. You're the lucky one. You're the one that got away. You're the one that got to be initiated into the truth. And the gratitude that that brings. And the luxury that brings to be able to engage or not engage. And at what level you engage. To be alert now, if you're an open solar plex, to how the past hurts that were said, you know, were said from an emotional person exploding. And they do, and they always will. It doesn't mean that it was true, and it doesn't mean that that's really what they felt. To be able to see that with an open spleen when you were younger, you were also taking in all the toxic stuff from the others that nobody ever knew was going on. And now having detoxed and understood the clarity that can come from an open spleen, really being able to look after themselves and to know how to keep in balance with their own physical health, they can feel it coming. You can retain your integrity even around that. This time, as an adult, if you look around you, you can see so many examples of not self behavior. The you that was before acting out in front of you in the form of other people. And they don't know that. It's not a matter of pointing that out to them. It's not a matter of making a whole thing about how they should wake up. It's just for you to see it and to be thankful you're out of it. And if you get a chance to have a quiet word, you know, on the side that could be helpful without putting them down, you may do a lot of good for them. You know, to see that you are privileged in coming to this knowledge and to use it in a way that it was intended. The way for you to grow into who you are and to be who you are and to help those if you get the chance. Do not use it as a weapon. Do not be forever controlled by the puppet strings of your childhood. Go back and see them. Go back and see it melt in front of you. Come back victorious that you've finally got over that. And it is no longer relevant to you. It's no longer something that comes up again and again in your dreams and your conversations and your reactions. Human design is a tool to be used and to be used well. You know, everything has its own timing. And my view is that it's never too late. <laughs> my view is there is always a way through, providing you're involved in the experiment and you're dedicated to it. That's what brings freedom. That, what, that's what really cuts the ties. 
That's what really frees you from being held by your own past in your own mind, by people who may no longer even be alive. You know, that bad teacher that really had it in for you. Are you still carrying them around? Can you imagine what they were? Can you imagine their design? Can you see signs of it? You know, maybe they were a manifesto that was heavily punished when they were younger, you know, and now is out there putting it out on the kids. You know, victims become victimizers. Hurt people hurt people. You don't have to be one of them, but you can see through it. Seeing it clearly is really what it's all about. It's in the seeing of it that the strings are cut. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that will be useful to you. And I will be back again very soon with something completely different. Bye-bye for now.